Have you been thinking about a bilge alarm? Yeah, me neither. But sometimes life makes choices for you. And so today on the Boat Galley Podcast, I'm going to be talking about bilge alarms. I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and the Boat Galley Podcast is the place that answers all your cruising questions, even the ones you didn't know you had. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by SeaTac Systems. SeaTac offers cruiser-tested solutions for weather, navigation, and communications. SeaTac solutions include satellite internet, Wi-Fi, cellular, and SSB. What's more, SeaTac offers do-it-yourself electronics consulting with custom wiring diagrams and professional advice for your electronics, DIY installation, and integration projects. Visit c-tech.com. That's S-E-A-T-E-C-H.com for more information. As a bonus, Boat Galley Podcast listeners get free shipping from SeaTech with the code GALLEY2019 at checkout. Now, I did not intend to be talking about bilge alarms today. But sometimes things happen. We were doing our normal morning stuff aboard Barefoot Cal. I was replying to some emails and Dave had just brushed his teeth. And suddenly there was a loud whistle noise coming from the port side of the boat. The bilge alarm? Yep. Dave was standing right over the bilge access panel and looked in. He was rather shocked to find a couple of inches of water in the bilge, which is normally totally dry. Barefoot Gal is a catamaran. There's no stuffing box, and her bilges are very shallow. We typically check the bilge every few days, and there's just absolutely nothing ever in it. The water wasn't yet deep enough for the automatic bilge pump to kick on, but the alarm had let us know we needed to check out a potential problem. And so we're checking. The first thing to check in a situation like this is whether the water is fresh or salt so you know where to start looking. And next, check the rate of flow. Our leak is nothing that is going to sink the boat. That much was immediately clear. After a full day of checking, we know lots of things that it's not. We've checked all the potentially big problem areas, and they're not problems. We finally concluded that there was a tiny crack in a water hose where it went on a hose barb. We fixed that and we'll see if any more water appears. We're now checking the bilge every 30 minutes. But really, the source of the water isn't the topic of this discussion. What I want to talk about is the importance of having a bilge alarm. It let us know that there was a problem even before the bilge pump kicked on. Had it been a big problem, even a few minutes early warning could have been critical. Twice on our previous boat, our bilge alarm alerted us to problems. Once, an improperly replaced stuffing box after we'd been on the hard, and another time, we had a pinhole leak in our fresh water tank. Now, you can do bilge alarms several different ways. You can wire it into the bilge pump circuit so that if the bilge pump goes on, the alarm will sound. That's what we had on our previous boat. And the problem with this is that you don't hear anything until the bilge pump is on. That may not give you the early warning that you really need. You can put it on a separate circuit with a float switch to trip it. There's two fewer connections in the bilge circuit this way, fewer possible points of failure. You can also mount the float switch lower than the float switch for the bilge pump so that you do get that early warning. You can use a separate battery-powered water alarm. These are very easy to install, but not nearly the battery life or loudness of one that's wired into the house batteries. But it also won't drain the house batteries if the bilge pump is needed, and it's easy to turn off the alarm, whereas hardwired ones can't be turned off unless you install a switch. There are also standalone alarms that can send a message to a cell phone if you keep your boat at a marina where Wi-Fi is available. They'll also let you know if power or Wi-Fi goes down. These are good if you only occasionally stay on the boat so that you know of a problem when you're not there. 
we opted for a hot water heater alarm that runs on a 9 volt battery. It's not as loud as some, but it's still loud enough that we can hear it over the diesel engine. We like it that in an emergency, we can silence it by drawing out the contacts or just pulling the battery. While we like having an alarm tell us of a problem, we don't want one constantly sounding as we are troubleshooting. The company says that one battery will last up to five years and the alarm will sound for three days if activated. Just to be on the safe side, we use a lithium 9 volt battery and replace it every year on our anniversary. The old one gets put into a blood press pressure cuff where we'll see if it dies. I want to know that the battery in the build alarm will work. Now you can buy 12 volt or battery powered alarms in many places, such as automotive, hardware, or home improvement stores. There are probably hundreds of different models available and they're quite inexpensive for the peace of mind. Marine stores also sell more expensive marine alarms, but I honestly don't see how they are any better. For both boats that we've had, we've bought our alarms on Amazon, and I've put links to those models in the show notes. I haven't used an alarm that sends a message, but a guy that stopped by our booth at the Annapolis Boat Show did tell me about one they were using. A particularly nice feature of this one is that it is powered by a cord that plugs into a USB socket, which most boats have. Then you simply need a reasonably good Wi-Fi connection. Not a hotspot from your phone, which won't be available when you take your phone off the boat. I put a link to this model also in the show notes. Whatever you do, a build alarm will give you considerable peace of mind. There are pros and cons to each of the models, but you can find one that will meet most of your requirements. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please be sure to subscribe in your podcast app. Just search for The Boat Galley Podcast. And reviews are always appreciated. Until next time, then. Bye.